There we go, brother. The back attack is on. There he is. Okay, I can take these off. Hold on. There you go. Oh, look at that. Welcome to the shit show. G Max. I got to tell you something. So, like, I'm not even set up for this. As we had last week, we had Jimmy Buffett on, and I could not get him. He's over here. So, when I look at you, I got to go over here. Right. And then over here is when I talk to. Well, yeah, when I look at you talk, I look over here. Yeah. Isn't well, this. That's Have you confusing. been doing this for a while? Have you been doing this for a while with the Zoom stuff? Because it's yeah. driving me crazy. No, it's been great uh, because I've been doing, because we've got this, this, this whole virus situation, yeah. I've been interviewing different people via Zoom. And the yeah. great thing with lockdown is so many more people are available. I had Alan Alda on the show a couple of weeks ago, and I wouldn't and normally get great. him. Yeah, yeah. That, I, I really enjoyed that interview with Alan Alda. I think he's one of the, he's one of the classiest guys in the business. He, I, he was at the Hall of Fame Awards. I saw him in New York. He oh, was there. Okay. And he yeah. came up and hugged me. And he said to me, he said, you are a ball of fire. <laughs> He's <laughs> he right, Johnny. You are a ball of fire. No, but that's enough to drive a man, like, to say, that's it. I, Alan Alda said some nice things to me. I thought that was cool. But I loved your interview with him. And uh, he has, uh, is it Parkinson's? Is that what it yeah, is? Yeah, he's got Parkinson's now. I think he's yeah. had it about five years. But it hasn't slowed him down at all. He's doing that podcast. Have you heard his podcast that he does no, clear and vivid? Oh, he's interviewed people like Tom Hanks. And, oh, he's just great. McCartney. He's doing a really good yeah. show there, that that, that well, thing. Graham. It's it's, it's no it's no shit show, though, you know? <laughs> <laughs> I would have to say, if you're Alan Alda and you can't get a good guest on, you've really got problems. You yeah. know what I mean? Yeah. Yeah, you've yeah. really got a problem. So, I mean, look, you're stuck with me, so this is the way it goes for you. No, you Johnny, me. Johnny, Alan you're a hero, Alan. so it's good, to, it's good to have you on. Yeah. Hero? How, how, yeah. Could I be, how, how am I a hero? I don't you're understand. A, you're a radio hero. I, I, you know, visited Chicago many times, and every time I visited, you were on the loop. And I listened and I said to my wife, I said, this guy is incredible. And so then uh, later, internet radio came along. So I'd listen to you on the internet on, on various stations through yeah, the years. Yeah. And then, uh, and then, then I was in, I should talk about the first time we met. It yeah, was, okay. it, it was a boot was, camp. Was that it? Yeah, it was, that's it. It was 2015. That, but, yeah, it was yeah. a thing called the morning show boot camp. It was in a yeah. hotel in Chicago. I forget which one. And yeah. you were about to do your syndicated show on Westwood one. Mm -hmm. And so they had this room full of radio people from, uh, all over the world, yeah. but mostly the U S and Canada. And uh, Mike McVeigh, who was boss of Cumulus, who owned Westwood one, I think was, he, he was putting on a <laughs> session. He was yeah. putting on a session to introduce us to Jonathan Brandmeier because you're about to do this new syndicated show. Mm -hmm. And so we're all there and it's the last day of the conference. And the conference had been plagued as radio conventions usually are with bad sound from the, from, <laughs> the, hard to believe. from the, yeah. Right. <laughs> yeah, so the, the, the sound is bad. And, and Mike is doing this whole big intro about Johnny B and radio legend and hall of fame and the whole thing. And the mics cut in and out and stuff. And yeah. then, a heckler at the back of the room starts abusing uh, Mike McVeigh, who's like one of the main people in in the U.S. radio, one of the main figures who who, who runs a group of radio stations. And this guy's going, "This is ridiculous. This is supposed to be. This is supposed to be a, an yeah. audio thing, and you can't even yeah. get the sound right. And what's going on here? Whatever." Yeah. And he walks yeah. up to the stage, and everyone in the room's going, "Like, wow, this is really embarrassing." And it was you. <laughs> well, Graham, isn't that a fact? Here, here's a guy who's <laughs> he's not fired, who's supposed to be, and who isn't, who's supposed to be in in radio. We're in radio. These are conventions. Graham says it's a radio convention of radio yeah. people yeah. who do radio, which I believe, if I am correct, it's audio, audio. Yeah, and he's up there. Anyway, I want to know. <laughs> What the hell is going on? And I hate long introductions. I hate any of that stuff anyway. I'm not comfortable with any of that. And you know that I was asked to do that. It's called, for ladies and gentlemen who are not in the business, it's like a boot camp. And you're supposed to go there and tell people how to do radio or whatever yeah. it is. And I, it's, they would ask me a lot, almost every year, every other year, could you just come and talk? To, I said, that is so arrogant, arrogant for me to stand up there and tell you 
in the audience how to do a radio show. Because if you're really doing a radio show or in this case, a podcast or a stream or whatever it is you do these days, you just got to do what's in your head. Don't let anyone tell. Why would Jonathan Brandmeier tell you how to do a radio show? I don't know well, shit. Well, we, want we, well we wanted to hear from someone who's a Hall of Famer. We wanted to hear a guy who's won Marconi Award. We wanted to hear from you, Johnny. Uh, you and could, uh, to, to yeah. this day, it's the <laughs> only time I've been to an event where the star of the event has been heckled by himself. You, <laughs> you heckled your own show. I've never <laughs> seen that before. That's how smart I am. <laughs> uh, back on my own self. Oh my yeah, God. that's hilarious. You, you, no. you are you are unique. We're, we're, uh, everybody, if everybody in the world was a was a planet and they all revolved the same way, Johnny B revolves the other way. I mean, uh, how how many people? And I say that a good good way. You know, yeah, how many sure. people, myself included, who mm -hmm. got into radio? and shortened their name. My original name was Graham McAteer and I shortened it to Graham Wait Mac, minute. right? Wait right? a minute, let me, yeah. hold on a minute. Let me okay. hear that for a second. Okay. Say it, say the full name in like you're really delivering it on the radio. What, Your my full name? My full name is Graham McAteer is my original it, it, name. No, but sell it like you mean it. Let me, let me hear okay. it. I wanna, I'm gonna shut my eyes and hear it come out like okay. I'm listening to the radio. Okay, okay, I'm on with Johnny B, I'm Graham McAteer. What's wrong with that? Well, well I, I at the time I was on the air in Australia and I thought it was too quick. Yeah. So I shortened it. And many people in radio shorten their name. That's why so many radio presenters have two first names like I yeah. do now. Right? Yeah. But you, you lengthened your name. Well, yes, this is <laughs> where you bring this up because I just found a document which is really, really weird. My name, my Catholic name is John Brandmeier. B-R-A-N-D-M-E-I-E-R, yeah. -E -E right? John. So I was working in Wisconsin at WOSH in Oshkosh. D please, I'm not bragging. Thank you. Thank you very much for that. You know, you know where Oshkosh is? No, you don't even know where it is, right? No, it's Wisconsin. No, it's, a little, it's a little town in Wisconsin. I grew up in Fond du Lac, which is 20 miles from uh, Oshkosh. So I'm at the station and I get an offer to work in, I'm still not bragging, Appleton, Wisconsin. Okay? Appleton, Wisconsin, which is maybe even smaller, but maybe 10 people more. And the guy, the general manager says to me, well, you're not going over there with your name. We, you've been on here for a year. You're not going to take what you did here and take your name over there. You got to change your name. I said, I'm not changing my name. What do, you, what do you mean? My dad will kill me. This is how old I was, like 15, 16 years old. He goes, my dad, my dad will kill me. And he said, well, change your first name then. And I said, to, to what? And he goes, how about Jonathan? And I said, Jonathan Brandmeier. All right. Uh, okay. And we had a one sheet, no lie, one sheet of paper. I have that contract. And it said, I, uh, Phil Robbins, general manager, WSH, gosh, gosh, give him the right to use the name John Brand, Jonathan Brandmeier. Signed me off and I went to Appleton, Wisconsin. That's why my name was elongated because yeah. of that. Yeah. But, that but everybody else shortens their name. Yeah. Johnny B makes his longer. And Johnny B, they just, people just started calling me that, you know, they just yeah. said Johnny B and Johnny B. So that was cool. Did you just have a siren go by your house? Yeah, that's right. Yeah. Uh, anything, anything could happen now. We're about to get raided. I don't know. Yeah. <laughs> well, jeez. I mean, you know, honestly, honestly, do you know in this day and age, what could possibly be knocking at your door? Jesus. It's unbelievable. No, I don't know. That's why I was wearing the mask yeah. when we first started, yeah. because I don't want to, I don't want to take any, I know we're 4,000 miles apart, but you know, I, I had to wear this yesterday when I had my hair cut. Yeah. You're lucky you got a haircut. Yeah, well, the, but the guy wouldn't let me in. He said, have you got a mask? And I said, no. And he said, if you pay me a pound, I'll sell you a mask. So he made a pound from me before I got the mask. And I said to him, look, I don't know. I, this is what I said to him. Look, he said, I, I said, I don't know if these masks do any good. And he said to me, Look, put it this way. We said, first of all, he's not going to cut my hair unless I wear the mask. And he's wearing a, a thing like he's going to get out an angle grinder, not a pair of clippers, right? Yeah. So he, he says to me, here's why we wear a mask. He says, and this sounded creepy at first, imagine if you and I were naked. And I went, okay. And he went, and we're standing facing each other just a couple of feet apart. And I went, okay. And he, wow. goes, he goes, and I take a pee. And I went, yeah. And he went, you'd get pee on you. And I went, okay. He goes, now imagine if you were wearing trousers. And I went, yeah. And he went, if I take a pee, you'll get pee on your trousers. It won't be as bad. 
And I said, okay. He said, now imagine if we were both wearing trousers. And I said, yeah. And he said, and I take a pee. And he goes, he, won't, he says, I'll only get it on me and won't get it on you. Oh, this is all before God. I had a haircut. That, that, I want to get my haircut there. <laughs> that, that guy's nuts. Was he doing it wrong? You're saying before he actually snipped into your head. Yeah, he was he 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 was actually working on another guy who was having his hair cut yeah. with a mask on, and he he turned away to give me this story to sell me this mask oh. for one pound, and then he agreed to. Well, then I had to wait downstairs, and then he, then he he agreed to cut my hair. I would think at, at that point, Graham, is I, I believe the first sentence of uh, if I were naked, I said, you know what? I, okay, talk to you. <laughs> Hey, imagine me naked. Oh, um, oh, you know what? Hold on, I got a call. Yeah, <laughs> yeah. Wait, 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 wait. Imagine if I pissed on you. Okay. <laughs> I'm gonna go. Come on, you gotta be kidding me. That's a, that. Oh, wow. Well, you look good, by the way. I can tell you that. You look, you good. look great, Johnny. Where are you at home now? Is this your home studio? Yeah, this is home studio. I don't know what you can see here because I have the green screen because we have to do that. You look like you're in prison right now. No, I'm actually in the wardrobe or what you would call a closet. Yeah. Um, when it when works, this it, when, is soundproofing, very nice. But you know, we're set, we're set for it, right? Because who would ever imagine, Graham, that would happen like this? That we would be set for it, ready to go. Because I wouldn't be going to a radio station. I wouldn't be going to anywhere to do a show. And we're set, full class. You know, so here, ready to go. Oh wait, let me pull my mask on. Anyway, so I have the mask on now. Is this any different? Do you hear any difference in sound? Because it's yeah, different, right? you're all so, muffled right now. What's yeah, going on? Course. That's my fake mask on. So. Oh, that's your fake mask on. It sounds exactly like it. <laughs> yeah, you. very good. Very uh, thank good. you. Uh, but yeah, we're. I, I mean, you can do whatever you want wherever you want now, right? From your, from your, as you call it, your wardrobe room. It, it, that's what it is. Actually, a walk-in wardrobe that uh, yeah. that we set up to do the show on podcast radio, which is this yeah. new sh station in London. It's been going about six months, I think, and it's on the radio. It's on the air in London. It's on now, the air we, in Manchester. Where, are we on the air now? Yeah, well, we're recording and it'll be on the air next week. Oh, but yeah, we're, well, yeah. I want, I want to move to London. Could I move to London? No, how, and I'm being serious now. How hard would it be to work on this? And I want to hear about this podcast. What do you call it again? Podcast what? Podcast, podcast radio. Podcast. It's a radio station that plays podcasts. So I'm going to talk to the boss and see if we can get the shit show on there. Yeah. I mean, we've got to do that. We've what got the, Alan Alder on there and we've got, yeah. uh, Is we've got. Me on there? What's that? Is, you know Bean from Kevin and Bean? Kevin, Kevin and Bean. And that's right. He's a good friend of mine now. He moved to London. And, and that's what I'm saying. Yeah, and Bean is Bean is uh is a, is a pod jock and he introduces the podcasts. He introduces mine, he introduces this show. Uh what, 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 Bean's pod a great jock. Pod jock, so he's just like a tracker, he just goes like, Hey, is Graham Mac now coming up? Here's Graham Mac. Yeah, yeah. Yeah. And then he usually says something insulting. I mean, last week he said, um, he said if there was a statue uh, of Graham Mack in London, he says, I'm so sure somebody would push it over. <laughs> <laughs> All right. Jingle out. See, boys and girls in radio, now you jingle out. If you yeah. say something like that Bean just said, you just jingle out on that one. I yeah. love that. Yeah, jingle yeah. out, man. Hit the, hit the quarter hour, man. Don't forget the PPM. Just come on strong. I remember a guy, and it's a pretty well known. It actually was, uh, it was, um, Bean's old boss and my old boss, Kevin Weatherly. He told mm -hmm. me, just be funny on the eights. All right. Why on the eights? Well, because that's when PPM started. And, and oh, then they okay. came yeah. and we did that for a second. And then it became Jack FM. But it was like, it, it's like going into a party and someone says to you, hey, man, you know, do something crazy. Yeah. Yeah. What, what are you talking about? I mean, it's just, they just took the lifeblood out of radio. They just took it out. It's like the fact that you and I could just sit here and babble is great. It's yeah. just it's fascinating to me. I think it's fascinating. Only thing, like I said, as we started, um, and it was really, uh, really just um, humanizing, I guess it was. Just know that Jimmy Buffett was like, he's, oh, he's moving his camera and I'm moving my, and I, and I still, I, and I had a guy come in here and say, can I just, Oh, well, I'm not coming in now. I'll come in, uh, you know, maybe next week. And just to move my camera, my computer, so it goes here, so I don't have to keep looking at you over here. Well, you know, it drives me crazy. But so I'm, I'm always paying attention to you, but it looks like I'm not, right? Because I'm looking here. 
Yeah, yeah, I'm getting it. I'm getting it. Yeah, yeah. But look but, at you. You're always looking at me. So how, your computer's right there, right? Right in front of you. Yeah, I'm using the camera in the computer. Is that, are you using a different camera? To, yeah, I'm using no, no. the actual computer in the camera. The camera but, in the computer. Well, that's a good, and, and he has a wardrobe. <laughs> okay, but no, but that's a good camera then. You have a right, good it's camera. Just, a, just the one yeah. that comes with the iMac, just yeah, the one on it. So. Everybody, I, I, I would move to London in a minute, but let me ask you this. So this show thing you do yeah. on this podcast network, whatever it is, yeah. uh, I thought you left radio. I thought you had, you got booted out like I got booted out. Yeah, I thought, oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. I got, since last time we we spoke, last time we spoke was yeah. on the air when you were on that Westwood One show. We spoke on yes. that show a couple of times. Okay. Since I spoke to you, which I think is only a couple of years ago, I've been fired twice. <laughs> <laughs> General managers, radio consultants, radio, are all idiots because yeah. they believe that you could fire the good ones, cheaper, yeah. by the way, and hire the cheaper ones to pull it off. And they can't do it. No. They just can't. So you're, and then now they're all of a sudden I'm seeing articles show up and you see the same trades that I see. Oh yeah. Radio is realizing that it had fired the talented guys and replaced them with monkeys and it doesn't seem to work. One, yeah. guy said to me, one guy said to me, you know what? He's walking around the room. He's showing me, he's trying to get me to go to his station. And he says, uh, seriously, we could get a monkey to do your job. And I said, well, you should get, a, and not, my, that's a quote. And I know that, you know, the guy, and I would tell you the guy, but he's passed away. So think about it. He was also featured in the Howard Stern movie. So figure it out. Okay. Yeah. And he says to me, yeah, I could get a monkey to do your job. I said, you ought to get a monkey to do your job. I don't know if you saw my Gmail. My Gmail has a picture of a monkey with a loop hat on. It's a <laughs> yeah, real monkey. That's what that's about. Right. That's what it's about. He's a real monkey. Came into the studio and we played poker together one day. And you know what? That monkey could do my job. <laughs> I realized he could do my job. There's no but, question about it. But but look at it, Johnny. For those who are outside the radio business, yeah, here's, here, here's a couple of truths about radio business that might surprise people. It is the only job in the world where you are paid to talk and the boss continually tells you to shut up. Yes. <laughs> wow. I like that, uh, that Graham Mack guy is fantastic. Uh, but if you two would just stop talking, I would really appreciate it because it seems to be interrupting the music. Where else? I'm going to ask you this seriously, ladies and gentlemen. Where else can you get a Beatles song on the radio? You can't get them. They're going to play one for you if they would just shut their fucking mouths. Yeah. Uh, and and it's it's a business it's a business and this might shock people as well where the oh, most wait, can, we swear, can we swear on yours? Of I just course, swore. of course, yeah, oh, of course. God bless you. So it's it's a business where you take a guy who gets a job as an air personality. Yeah. And mm -hmm. the ones that suck at being air personalities they get to be promoted to be the boss. Yeah. <laughs> and it's then right. the people who do not know how to be good air personalities because they sucked at it, then yeah. they start coaching, coaching people yeah. who do know how to do it. Yeah. And they, so there is no way this thing can possibly work if the it's people who make button. the decisions are the people who failed. Yeah. Surely it, the people who should succeed should be the ones in charge. Hallelujah, ladies and gentlemen. <laughs> Graham Mack has said the, the, everything you just said is the Bible. It's unbelievable. And you know what the radio people today are really, really good at? The management, they're really good at doing everything they can to keep their own jobs. That's their job. Them. That's their only That's their, That's their. their only goal is to keep they their job. Fail yeah. up. They fail up. It's weird. Yeah. You go like this. Well, that guy's fired. We talked about some people you know, earlier and we're like, How, wait a minute, how'd that guy get another job? And they just keep going. And you're right. Now they're consultants. Consulting it, what? Consult this. Yeah. 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 How many consultants have never had a number one? Mo you had a number one show on yeah. the loop in Chicago for something like 14 years. How many uh -huh. consultants have that pedigree? <laughs> and they listen to them rather than Johnny B. Well, I don't know. I got to tell you something. The only thing I can say is that I always had fun doing it. And yeah. uh, and I was allowed to do what I wanted to do to a degree. Yeah. And when you stop doing that, when they start adjusting, when the consultants are listening to the sponsors and the sponsors are running radio, yeah. then you know you've got a problem. It's not brain surgery. Just open it up, let good people on, let them talk, have some fun. And you can find music anywhere. I mean, really, come on with this. You know what yeah. I mean? You can find it anywhere, pretty much. But 
when I was the, the last time I was in London. So go back to let me move to London. Yeah. If I chose to move to London. Yeah. Would that be difficult in this in this environment? Do can I live near your wardrobe room there, right inside the wardrobe? Yeah, of course room? you can. I mean, Bean, Bean has has moved here from. Yeah. Uh, well, he he was on the end Los Angeles, but he moved here from New Orleans. Um, he's yeah. moved here, but apart from the work he's got at Podcast Radio, he has actually found it quite difficult to find um, to find radio work here. Yeah because they're a bit scared because he's successful and knows what he's doing. <laughs> you know, no, that really, that, that really frightens them. But that is my, my question, Graham. How would they, why would they welcome a guy over there? I, how would I fit in? It's your, you know, to me, local radio, when I say local, you know, is the, is the magic of radio. When you're talking about the place you're in, if I don't know anything about the place I'm in, I mean, well, is that, a, that's a pretty I think, bad thing. I think Johnny, you would notice things about London that Londoners have stopped noticing. Yeah. You would see things and talk about things on the air that people, just like great comedians, when, when you go like, I, that, I, that's always happened. Though. I've never even thought about yeah. that. Yeah, that is kind of strange. You would pick up on all that. Yeah, so you, know, be, yeah, you know. You know, right. you would. No, I'm not saying that you're right. That's a compliment. I'm saying because I remember uh, when they offered me a job in Phoenix. Mm -hmm. So they said I was in Milwaukee, Wisconsin. Once again, not bragging. I went to... Uh, Phoenix. And I said, I don't know anything about Phoenix. I can't go to Phoenix. But that talking about why are all these old people driving around in cars like this? Why are all these they're blocking the traffic? And <laughs> you're right. And then it became, hey, I didn't realize everyone is from someplace else in Phoenix. And they're all thinking the same thing. But in London, I don't know if that's the case. I mean, people yeah, I, just, I think I think it worked. I mean, I I'm British, but I started on the radio in Australia. And I yeah. was just, I was really open. I just went on the end and said, you know, look, I don't understand this. I don't, and like, you know, place names, a lot of Australian place names, those Aboriginal words. I, you know, they'd hand me a weather report and I'd be like, oh, the traffic. And I just yeah. go, look, you're going to have to help me out here. And the audience yeah. love helping you out. They'll ring you up. And, you know, right. what the first, first Australian radio station I worked on, 2PK Parks in the central west of New South Wales, five hours drive west of Sydney. And, a lady rang up on my first show and she phrased it this way. She said, oh, you're our new announcer. She didn't <laughs> say, she didn't say, oh, you're the new announcer. Yeah. Or she said, you're our new announcer. Yeah. Because the station in their mind belonged to them. Yeah. And that really tells you that that's why you're there. You're there for yeah. them. We, you, you, are, you belong to them. Yeah, That's yeah. what it's about. She said, you're our new announcer. I love so, that. So, yeah. And, and so story. I had the wrong accent and, and everything, yeah. but it worked. Yeah, I love that story because you're right. To me, it's like, it's really what's always driven me is them. Yeah. Them. Yeah. You out there, if they're calling in, they always take me in places I never think to go. And they're always funnier and more entertaining. And I always let them be entertaining. If you're starting to think this is like, oh, I got to do a big show for you, you know, then you're, you're done. Let them. Let One them, of the greatest uh, things yeah. about your show is the loon line. Yeah, like they're crazy. They're all nuts. <laughs> yeah. Well, just yeah. like Johnny yeah. in the leisure suits, you know, yeah, yeah, it's, yeah, you know, yeah. we're all crazy in Chicago. I mean, you yeah. are. Um, that's what it is. All these years. <laughs> yeah. No, no. Stir crazy after all these years. Right. I yeah. mean, I don't know, but I'm, I'm stir crazy. Okay. I, but right now would not be a good idea to move to London because I was going to, um, try to become a beef eater, but I see where they're, well, yeah, they're, off. they're laying them yeah. off too. They're having the, that's not a great career move to be a beef eater. No. And, and there's a big vegan movement as well, which isn't helping them. <laughs> oh no, no, no. <laughs> oh, yes, indeed. <laughs> I'm definitely a beef eater from Wisconsin. What do these beef eaters do? They stood uh, in a bridge or something. What do they do? I'm not. Well, the on. thing is the tower of London used to be a jail. Yeah. So the beef eaters, the yeoman guards, as, as they're called, they're the guards of the jail. The thing is, okay. it hasn't been a jail for a couple of hundred years. So they've actually been doing all right. <laughs> they've been milking yeah. it for a while. They've suddenly yeah. got found out. <laughs> yeah. You talk about, we're getting laid on radio. We're getting fired every other day. People losing their jobs, unemployment line. But the beef eaters just standing there. <laughs> Anybody knows yet? Anybody knows we're, we're still here? 500 years, I see. Wait, wait, what's that like? Tower of London beef beaters facing redundancies. Redundancies oh, for the first time in 500 years. Yeah, yeah. But there's not, it's not been a jail. If you've not no jail, you don't need. So they've been there, you know, telling tourists facts about the Tower of London. This is how I work out. If you want to know, this is how I work out when I'm on the air. It's like this real quick. 
quick. These are for oh, triceps. Going, yeah, you're going good there. So, you. <laughs> so do you keep yourself healthy, Johnny? Sure, of course I do. <laughs> Wait a minute. Yes. Hey, so anyway, I want to tell you something. I want to tell you my story about London, okay? okay. So we went to London and um, we were going to do a sh our show live from Abbey Road. Okay. We, we did. We did. There's yeah. two stories about London that I recall. When as soon as I ever, ever I talk to you or about you in London, I always go to the only two stories I know from our visit to London. We went to Abbey Road and I'd never been to London before and I just was so excited. So we'd go out every night, like four o'clock, five o'clock in the morning, come in and then do a morning show back to Chicago. So I walk in one day to Abbey Road and uh, the PD goes, there's your first interview. This is five minutes before we go on here. This is your first interview. Who's that? And he goes, Jerry Rafferty, the guy okay. that did uh, Down Baker the Street. Corner of Baker Street. Look at you. Yeah, that's right. And I go, I, what, what am I going to say? I don't, I, I don't want to talk to Jerry Rafferty. What am I going to say to Jerry Rafferty? What's, what am I? I don't even know what to say to him. I'm so hungover. I can't even hardly stand up. So they go, here is John LeBrandmeyer. Yeah. All right. Hey, Buzz, how's it going? Um, we're live at Abbey Road. Our first guest, Jerry Rafferty. Hey, Jerry. So you wrote, um, you wrote, um, Baker Street, right? I mean, that's a long song. That sex soul and everything, and that—that's a long song. Um, what was I? What was that uh, about? Like one of the dumbest, you know? What else we gonna say? You know? <laughs> what, okay, uh, what was that about? Uh, it was about Dub Street, Baker Street, saxophone solo was good. <laughs> I got nothing. Then I go, Buzz. Buzz goes, I don't know who Jerry Rafferty is. <laughs> He's sitting right with us. I go, you know, he's right there. Right? Okay. And then we went to a commercial and we came back. We played one of his songs. It was five minutes long. And it gave us a chance to have like one or two more questions. And then I took off. That was it. He, then he took off. So that's my first recollection of Abbey Road. <laughs> Second was the engineers. And maybe you know this. The engineers I, who, who did the Beatles, the White Album, whatever they did there. I said, that must have been amazing working with the Beatles. And they, he said, we would draw straws not to get the job. We would be laying on cots on the ground, sleeping all night, 24 hours a day, seven days a week in Abbey Road. And when they got an idea, we all jumped up. He goes, that was a job that they did not want. A lot of those engineers, <laughs> wow. which I didn't know that. Wow. I did not know wow. that. Yeah. And, and they would say, I said, wait a minute. You got McCartney laying down. You got Lennon on a, co on a cot laying on the ground. You got that going on. And you're just, you don't want it. No, he goes, oh, believe me. It's just a job. At the end of the day, it was a job to them. So I thought, you got to be kidding me. And then... The same. The next day, I got kicked out of a London casino. Now, I don't know if you understand this because I don't know what the rules are right now. But we were staying at a nice hotel, and uh, I heard. I said, "Hey, I heard you guys have a casino down there, like a casino." They go, "Yeah." I said, "Oh, I'm going to go down there right now." And he goes, "No, no, no, no. You have to register 48 hours in advance." Does that sound like something you remember? Do you remember I, that? I don't know if they still have that because I'm I'm not a ga big gambler, but it sounds yeah. like they were private members clubs. Yeah, casinos yeah, used they, to be. They, yeah, yeah you, you couldn't. Yeah, there you go. You couldn't yeah. just go. This was 1985, 86. Mm -hmm. So you couldn't just go in there. And so I say, okay, where do I sign up? And I signed up. So one night I come back in, same thing, liquored up, running around London, all the great pubs, everything, having the time of my life. I loved it there. And, and uh, the guy goes, Mr. Brandmeier, you can go down now. I go, go down. what do you mean go down? He goes, down, downstairs, you can, you can play now. You, your name's, you're in. So I go, all right, I go in. And I am liquored. I've been in London. We've been out since eight, whatever it is. And I'm playing blackjack. And I go, hit, hit me, hit me hit me. And I got like 20 and I'm going, hit me, you know, playing black 21, hit me. And a guy gets up and he goes, he is a shill. He is a shill. Get him out of there. He is a shill. Nobody's that stupid. Nobody's that stupid. Get him out. They, went like this. they go like this, Mr. Brandmeier, let's go. I think it's time for you just. But you on, were literally go. asking to, to, to keep playing yeah. at 20. You had 20 yeah. and you were asking. <laughs> yes. Because I was half asleep. I, I was remember. I remember I was playing like this. Uh, 20, yeah. oh, oh, here we go. 21. Yeah. I, it, and who wouldn't think I was a shell? Who wouldn't think I, That's the only two things I remember about London other than just enjoying it immensely when I would go out. But that, uh, so I could move there, but I have to wait for this uh, COVID to leave, which is when that's, do you ever know when that might happen? I don't know. We're not, nobody seems to know, but we've got it. We've handled it even worse than America. So... 
I don't know. It'll be a little while yet. They've only just started opening pubs and stuff. So and and they only opened barbers two weeks ago, which is why I yeah. went <laughs> yesterday. So it, it's you. hard to know. But at least we've got the the, the chance to talk on podcast radio, which is yeah, it's on I'm it's on the air in London. It's also on the air in Manchester, and it's also on the air in Glasgow, and then it's online everywhere else. And the show becomes a podcast, so they can. Th there will be people being into. There are a, a few people in Britain who still do not know about the legend of Johnny B and the things you've done. Yeah, so, we had one listener who says here, uh, Johnny, you're live in London. Just let you know I'm hearing you loud and clear on my laptop in London. And right. Chester. And Chester. Got yes. your email. Yeah. We have one listener, yeah. one listener in London. Yeah, yeah. Well, they, I mean, they, they won't know the things you do. They won't know about the Hall of Fame. They won't know about 14 years at the Louvre. Uh, they won't know about... They won't okay. know that you appeared with Mary Tyler Moore in a TV movie. <laughs> Thank you. What was that like? That, that was, honestly, that was fantastic. I just enjoyed that immensely. And uh, she, I, I don't think anyone could be kinder than that woman. But I don't know if you're familiar, are you familiar with the movie Ordinary People? Yes. Where Mary Tyler Moore yes. yelled at, uh, I think it was Timothy Hutton and said, give him the goddamn camera. When they were trying to take a family picture with Tim, uh, with uh, Donald Sutherland and Timothy Hutton and taking the picture. So I got to see that person for one minute. We were doing a scene and uh, I was doing the morning show, preparing for a concert. We were in Los Angeles. And um, I, I just kind of lost track for that one moment in time doing the scene. And I kept coming in and screwing my lineup and coming in and screwing my lineup. And then she just goes, can we just take, she tells the director, we're just going to take a break for a second. She goes, come here for a second. She puts her arm around me. I would kind of walk out the door and she goes, get your act together. <laughs> Wow. Mary, Mary so I go, oh, oh, okay, okay, okay. So we go out and nailed it. But then as we went on in the production of Thanksgiving Day, which they call it um, something else in Europe, they call it, it still shows up. I still get a check for $5.90 or whatever it is. They call it something else. But we went on, and then whenever there was a lull on the set, I would just go, well, light the goddamn camera or give her the goddamn camera. And then she started to laugh and she sent me lovely notes. We've had her in the show many times. She was delightful. But also, I remember the very first time we had a table read and there's Joe Bologna, there's Tony Curtis. Think of Tony Curtis. Wow. Tony Curtis. Tony Curtis is standing there. We went outside for a break once and Tony Curtis and I are standing in the NBC building in front of the NBC building in Burbank. And there's a sidewalk there and he's talking about this, talking about that. And a girl walks by, a really beautiful girl walks by. And Tony goes, just a second. He walks away and then he comes back and he goes, dinner tonight. I said, how, how did you do? What, you just, what, did you know her? He goes, no, I'm Tony Curtis. <laughs> I swear to God, Graham, I swear. He went like this. He, she walked past us. He's like, just a second, I'll be right back. Goes back, got her card, and then ah, dinner tonight. Oh, yeah. Tony Curtis. Wow. I'm Tony Curtis. Yeah. Wow. Now we go back for the first table read, though. So all those people, Joe Bologna, uh, now passed away. Uh, Tony Curtis. Um, Sonny Bono. <laughs> Sonny wow. Bono. Wow. Yeah, Sonny Bono. Wow. That's what I see. Now you're getting excited. Sonny Bono. Uh, Mary Tyler Moore, of course, and some other great actors on this um, character actors you've seen in many movies. And so the very first time, and I hadn't seen Mary, and Mary walks in, we're all sitting down, and they go, okay, and then Mary starts the first words, and I'm the next line. Johnny? Johnny? Brandmeier? I go, I, because I just heard Mary Tyler Moore read, and I was like, she's right next to me, reading, <laughs> and I'm gonna, no, I'm gonna talk. Yeah, it was, it was something. I loved every minute of it, except if you can probably imagine waiting around on a movie set. Yeah. Boring. Yeah. Especially boring. for radio people. I made a, I made a TV yeah. commercial for, for my morning show once when I was on at TFM, it was a 30 second TV <laughs> spot there we and go. it took 12 hours to shoot. Uh -huh. I was there at six in the morning and yeah. left at six in the evening for 30 seconds. TV takes and movies take so long. With radio, you know, it's like you have an idea, get the sound effect, bang, you're done. It's, it's yeah, on yeah. there. 
I do like that. I like that. You're right about that. It's like, oh my God, we're going to do this from now, this angle, this angle. I got to do one time, there was a show called Crime Stories on NBC and uh, I, they flew me to Acapulco to do one scene and I was supposed to be, when I got there, they told me, here's what you're going to do. You're going to be the Mexican sheriff. And you're going to find this dead hooker and you're going to say you're sorry to this guy's family. I this guy. You're going to say you're sorry. So we get there, we get on the set and the guy goes, OK, let's go. Action. And I go like this. OK. And uh, so I walk up to the dead, the dead hooker in Crime Story and I go and, and the dad is there. He's crying. He's the great actor, whoever it was. And I go, I'm very sorry about your daughter, sir. Very sorry. Cut. <laughs> hey, hey, hey. Can someone tell the, uh, the DJ that he's a Mexican sheriff. <laughs> Speak Spanish. And I go, I don't know any Spanish. It was, a, it was a show with Dennis Farina. Dennis Farina. Dennis Farina, Chicago guy, comes over and goes, come here. Back off, he says to the director, back off. And he goes, just go there. Come here. Somebody teach him Spanish. And this is, lo siento de señor, de amiga señor. Lo siento, something like that. Cut, action. I do that one line, lo siento de señor, whatever I had to say, that one sentence, that's all I had to say. They taught it to me. They teach it to me. What a waste of time. And then they go, all right, stick around. This is 11 at night. I'm in Acapulco at Las Brisas Hotel at the time, which is a really nice place. And uh, they go, stick around for your clothes. So we're going to do that around midnight. I walked into the, the trailer where they had the clothing. I had my sheriff's outfit on. I took it off and I said, I took a cab back to the hotel. Yeah. So I'm not going to wait around to go, <laughs> no, I'm not doing that. You've got to be kidding me. <laughs> got to be kidding me that stuff's ridiculous but I, those guys who do it yeah it's, you know they always think it's easy it's not that easy yeah, yeah. That, you know what i mean to do something like that but with radio do you think that you had more fun doing live radio than doing uh, the podcast or doing yeah, stuff yeah can i can with? see i can see why your new show that you've decided instead yeah. of doing a recorded podcast and putting it out you do yeah. a live show, which goes out here. It's Saturday afternoon, about 4 p.m. I know it's it's 11. Is it 11? Uh, yeah, 10 a.m. 10 10 yeah. yeah. in Chicago is, yeah. is 4 p.m. here. And so you can listen to it live. And that really is the best when I can catch it. Live. I listen to podcasts if I miss it. But the, the live thing, it, radio is live. It's a live yeah. medium. And the people calling up and you don't know what's going to happen. I once went to a convention with uh it was in new york it was a talk convention and a guy called mike francesca francesca he's a I talk know, he's show a sports guy sports he's a sport guy, guy. Sports guy yeah, yeah. yeah very very and, good and, and i interviewed him for for a podcast and yeah. he said to me that the top rated shows on us tv are award shows and sports shows and yeah. he said the reason for that is because you don't know what the outcome's going to be and that's what radio, live radio is. You listen because you don't know what's going to happen next. And you listen to your show. You really don't know what's going to happen next. Because I don't, Graham. I, I don't. <laughs> and you just, you don't know because I just feel like, and people will say to me, and I got a lot of this in my ear. You know, I'm sure you got a lot of people telling you what you should do, what you shouldn't do. You know what? Why do you have to do it live? Just do a podcast. I said, because there's something, you get a feeling. It's a feeling. I've been doing this since I was 15. You go into the studio and you crack that mic and you don't know what's, you know, oh, look at this story. Oh, I love this story. I'm going to do this one now instead of the one I planned out to do. You know what I mean? And you're right. It's like walking a tightrope. It's exciting. And you know it's what exciting. else I love about it? Yeah. It's done. When yeah. It's done. No it's editing. <laughs> no editing. Just goodbye. See you tomorrow. It may have sucked, but guess what? I may try again tomorrow. It might suck exactly. tomorrow, but I hope it doesn't. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I, just, I love live radio. I just love it. I miss it. I think yeah. it's great. So that's why you can bring it to the stream and do it the way you want. And yeah. people seem to be gravitating towards it. So that's kind of nice to know that they kind of get. And, and in this environment, they need a guy like you. They need people who can give them some sort of, uh, you know, a little fun. It's yeah, that's fun. it's it's just, it's yeah it's they they they've sucked all the fun out of it and and yeah. they they've these formats and stuff and you know where they and, and a lot of times you're given this this format where you've got to do this here and then in the clock here and then you've got two minutes and you got thirty seconds and then you got to hit this hard thing out here and whatever and I said to a boss once I said you know what you're doing you're strangling it you've yeah. got to give it air and let it breathe. Because if you if you take that air away from it, it just loses something and becomes almost predictable. It's a formula. And you can yep. see why guys who don't know how to do it, which are the guys that become the bosses, you see why they <laughs> like the formula because right, right. they would think that's heaven. 
Wow, yeah. great. You're going to tell me exactly where to say stuff and whatever. But for guys like like Jonathan Brandmeier, that's, you're strangling it. You, you've got to yeah. give it air and let it breathe. Yeah. I will tell you, you, I mean, what you're saying today is just like so dead on. It's sort of like um, I, I, I always suck, really, really suck when someone is telling me what to do and when to do it. And the perfect example is my TV show. I had a TV show called Johnny Be on the Loose. People, maybe nobody ever saw it. I don't know. I, what it's it, bits of it are on YouTube. Bits yeah, are on, yes, yeah, I see. Yeah. And, and I, I literally remember going out there and just staring at the camera like, because I said no to it 10 times. I hung up on Fred Silverman, one of the biggest program directors in television. I decided I'm not doing it. I'm not doing this show five days a week. I got concerts. I got a radio show. I don't want to do it. I remember being in a meeting at NBC and I was saying, um, they were all talking about my big special at the Chicago theater introduced the, me on network television on NBC. Remember Brandon Tartikoff brought me in. Fred Silverman brought me in. Those are two of the biggest guys in television. So I'm thinking I'm in good hands. Yeah. You get in this room and they're all saying, well, we could bring Phil Collins in, drop him in with a piano. I'm not making some of this stuff up. Uh, we could bring him in. We could fly the piano in and then bring Phil Collins down. We could bring this guy in. We could bring that guy. And I can go, I know I can get Letterman to come on and maybe do something. They're saying stuff like that. And then everybody's talking, 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 talking. And then they said, so Johnny, what do you think about it? And there's silence. And I just go, uh, well, it just seems to me like we're spending a lot of money on stuff for me and people don't even know who I am. Maybe just as we just take that money and do a local show like Oprah did. She just started in Chicago. She did a Chicago show. Yeah. yeah. We're Let, worldwide. Let's see, what, let's see what happens after that. Let's just, and there's silence in the room. You can see, I remember all the eyes are looking around all you. And he goes, why don't you and your partner, they point to me and Fred Silverman. Why don't you and your partner go out and talk about it? Now we're in the NBC Burbank building. It's hallways up and down, quiet environment. Fred walks out. You know, if you know the story about Fred, he's now departed, right. but he uh, yelled a lot. Right. <laughs> and uh, we just didn't see it. I did the Sonny and Cher show. I mean, he was on the Time Magazine Programmer of the Year. You know, he was, he's a big, big man, big historical guy. I give him nothing but credit for that. He puts his arm around me and he goes, wow. We're walking down the hall and NBC he goes, you are, you're a real negotiator. You, you really are. We come in with the national television special. And we walk out with a fucking local show. <laughs> and he wow. and all the heads popped out of the hallway doors. What, what? What's going? That's how loud he was. That's how loud he was. We went back in and during the meeting was to just look, we're going to talk more about it. And that was the end of it. That's that was it. And we did the special. We did it. And it got killer reviews. Guess right. how many hours that took? It took to do one show, one 60 minute show took three straight days. Wow. Straight days. So I wow. wrote a letter. I wrote a note to Tartikoff, Brandon Tartikoff. I said, this is not what I signed on for. We were supposed to be, cause I had just done the late show. I filled in for Joan Rivers for a couple of weeks and everyone was trying to offer me a television job. And so I go, okay. And uh, I said, Brandon, this is not what I signed on for. I thought it was going to be like live, like the late show on Fox was. We were live on national television at eight o'clock at night. Think about that. Live. That's what drove me. Yeah. It was live. I was like, oh, this is wild. I'm, and 44 minutes later, it was done. Goodbye. That's the radio vibe. That's what television was. But I said, no. And then Brandon said to me, in effect, I have the facts because it's on wax facts, you know, that old wax. Yeah, yeah, it, yeah. I got that and he, he said, um, just bear with Fred, just bear with us for Fred for a while. Syndication means, and he wrote $4 sign, syndication means blah, 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 blah. And uh, I'll take care of Fred, okay? Then he got into an accident, Brandon did, he, he and his uh, daughter. And I've uh, never heard from him again. He joined Paramount, was the head of Paramount Productions and that was the end of it. And then my show went on. Fred said, we sold your show to uh, Natby. What show? You know, that special we did. We sold it. And you're going to be on five nights a week. Guess what time I'm going to be on? 6 p.m. Access television here in the United States. 6 p.m. is Wheel of Fortune. <laughs> Me running around with hidden cameras and a dog in my hand, answering Korean restaurants, if you can cook this dog for me. At 6 p.m. 
<laughs> oh my God. You knew that was going to fail. Why would we even waste our time? I just, I hated every second of it, but there was some weird stuff that came out of it. And it's like you said, some of it shows up on YouTube and, and, um, some comics will come in and talk with me and they'll say, I just saw that thing, man. I really like this. Like, okay, maybe like two bits we did stuck out out of six weeks, but it was, uh, it was an experience that, uh, was That's, that the go, show? Was that the show where you had the the, the two guys who claimed to be the sailor who kissed the nurse in the no, famous no, that was photo? NBC, local show. Yeah, the uh, the guy who said he kissed the girl on the cover of Life magazine, the nurse, and then another guy said he's the one who kissed the girl on Life magazine. We got them both to argue together. And they hated each, they hated each other. <laughs> they hated each other. Graham. This was that yeah. picture, the end of the Second World War in New York. Yeah. Uh, yeah. yeah. And one yeah. of them said he was the sailor, and the other one said, no, he was the sailor. Yeah. And they th each thought the other one was a fraud. And they yeah. were, and you were just loving it. You were like the ringmaster of this fight. Yeah. Of these two I old geezers. That was fun. That was fun. That was a local show. I, I really enjoyed doing that show. Right. Um, yeah, they're just fighting over who was the, the most iconic picture in the history of Life magazine. There's the sale of the World War II ends. I did it. Oh, I did it, you son of a bitch. I'm the one who kissed her. You didn't kiss her. And I'm just like, what the hell? I, well, okay. Yeah. Because I heard, I first heard that bit on the radio. So you must have done them on the radio as yeah. well. That's right. That's right. Yeah. It, was, it was, I see the one thing with me is you may have noticed with you. I don't like to let things go. Yeah. Um, once I started, I go, okay, wait a minute. That's not enough for me. And by the way, in the old, in the old, the, the newer version of radio where you had, you know, like you said, all these setups and it's quick and it's got to be done. You couldn't follow up. You couldn't build it. The audience could see us trying to build something and they liked that. Yeah. They liked yeah. It gives them a reason to hang around. It gives them a reason to come back. Yeah. yeah. Instead of all this science. Yeah. Yeah, but Graham, I wasn't doing it in a way that, hey, man, if I can just get past the quarter hour, they're going to come <laughs> with me. I didn't give a rat's ass. I'm doing it because I'm trying to think thinking out loud. What are we going to wait a minute? This old man is mad at this old man. Hey, get that old man, the other old man on the phone. Let's get those two talking. And then, yeah, and then people would call up and say, no, you got to get the nurse. Oh, wait a minute. Good idea. Get the nurse. You see, they're in on it. Yeah, and you don't have that today. So if you can do something live, it's uh, it's always much better. There's no doubt about it. But everyone's afraid of it. And now what you got on the live versions of all talk shows? All angry white men saying the exact same thing. Yeah, all angry white men saying the exact same thing every day. You heard one, you heard them all. That's the end of it. Yeah, you why I mean? is that? I asked. Uh, I, who I, I had a guess. I had uh, Michael Harrison, the, the editor of Talkers. I had him uh, on the show. And I asked him that question. I said, what, why is so much of, of AM radio in America? These, these, is, is AM, does it stand for angry man? I mean, what, 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 what is, why is that? I mean, TV seems to have the more liberal personalities like, you know, Jimmy Kimmel and, and Bill Maher, yeah. but radio has these, these to the right of center, angry men. Why is that? And he just said, he reckoned it was a, a point of view that was underrepresented in in U.S. media or something, and so it, it, it I, I, I don't, I don't know. Was that? Know. Did you get pressure for that when you with the Westwood One show? Oh yeah, yeah, yeah. I just your show because... wasn't like that, but a lot of the stations oh. that took the show were yeah. like that. Yeah. yeah. Yeah, more political. I remember the very that guy you talked to, him, Mr. McVeigh. Uh, you know, the very first show we did. Uh, on Westwood One, which is more, I mean, people who don't understand this, it was a more, uh, like we said, angry political time. Trump was beginning to run for president. And uh, you had Donald on the show. I know that. Yeah. yeah. Correct. Yeah. Because, you know, you were just, it was, I was asking him if he was going to release, if he were to become president, would he release? Um, Richard Simmons from his hostage situation, <laughs> from his home <laughs> housekeeper, something like that. It was like stupid. So yeah. um, uh, the, 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 what were we talking about? West, oh, the lie, oh, yeah, the political stuff. So the very first show, um, you speak of Jimmy Kimmel. Uh, David Lee Roth was on the uh, Jimmy Kimmel show. And he comes out there to do his live performance with the band, and he breaks his nose. And I thought, that's completely nuts. So I called Jimmy, get Jimmy on, because everybody was reporting what happened. What happened to his nose? And nobody understood. And Jimmy explained what happened. So yeah. I have a meeting. Yeah. Uh, Johnny. Oh, Johnny, listen, uh, you, uh, they, 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 I got a lot of complaints from the affiliates that you're talking to Jimmy Kimmel about David Lee Roth's nose being broken. And I said, yeah, that's news. That's, it's like 
news to me. It's 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 in the news. It's news. That's not the kind of news we want. Not news. News. <laughs> <laughs> it's not. That's not the kind of news news we want. You know, we got to be more political. So uh, yeah, that's I guarantee. Then then see you later, buddy. Right. They didn't work. It's funny thing about that part. That part Westwood One. There's two things about it. Uh, one. You should have seen my clock. Graham, only you and people on radio will get it. The clock was unbelievable. Boom, 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 boom. So the first time I was on, I just thought, well, I can just kind of miss that break that I always did. And I'd go to the next break, right? Then I get the calls. You just knocked 115 stations out of sync because you missed your break, right? It's like, oh, okay. Shit. Oh, okay. <laughs> so um, uh, I, would, uh, I was proud of that, that I actually could do that. Yeah, because you got really quite good at that, actually, boom, to boom, be boom, fair. Boom. Yeah, yeah that, I thought I did. And yeah, I, that's you not, did. I, yeah. I don't, I'm not proud of it, it's, but I'm just <laughs> wait a minute. I can get, I, I just proved I could do syndicated radio. Ding, boom, bomb, boom, 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 boom. Did I like it? No. But did I Did I kind of enjoy the, the challenge of it? Sure. I'll get this in. In 30 seconds, I'm going to get it in. Boom, 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 boom. So I think there's something to brevity. I get that. I understand that. Uh, but I did do that. But I remember um, I got fired through an email, but not from me. They emailed uh, our business guy and he said, just tell him he's fired. Okay. That was from the head of Westwood One. And when wow. I got to the Hall of Fame in New York, guess who the first guy to kneel down, kneel down at my table in Westwood One was the guy who fired me. <laughs> Matt well, you know, always been a big fan of yours, man. Congratulations, you know. Uh, I think he's still the boss, whatever his name is, Charlie somebody. I don't know what his name is. You yeah, know what these, I'm talking about. Yeah, uh, these people, they get, they're funny. They get just close enough to it in cases of success, and they can say, I was part of that. But they stay just far enough away. If it doesn't work, they go, oh, no, that's nothing to do with me. Yeah. I mean, they are geniuses that keep them in there. And the consultants, who has it said a consultant is a guy who'll steal your watch and tell you the time? <laughs> yeah listen why don't you write a book about radio because everything you're saying is like you know i thought of it but i never knew how to articulate it i think you've certainly done a fantastic job of that mr graham mac the g-mac attack is in full of force holy wow. smokes yeah you're right you're right it's like wow and in hollywood they're better they're they just they back away slowly failure right. uh-oh uh-oh yeah okay yeah goodbye you later. <laughs> right? They just, they're way down here. Oh, yeah. Anyway, Graham, sorry I fired me at that other station. They don't care. <laughs> they just back away. They back away slowly. That's what they do, man. Oh, my God. So how does the new show make money, Johnny? I, <laughs> wait a second. I got to make a note of this. How does the new show make money? Yeah. yeah no, now you're not so funny, are you, smartass? Because you're not making any money. Yeah. Answer his fucking question. <laughs> okay, hold on a minute. <laughs> <laughs> um, I do not know. I haven't the slightest idea. And the one thing I kept saying was we're building the plane while we're flying it. So yeah. we got a plane, yeah. we're in it, we're flying it, but I don't know where it's going to go. And some, it's thrilling. And yet for, uh, you know, the family, yeah, it's fun, isn't it? Fun when you don't make any money. Isn't that funny? <laughs> oh yeah, Lisa, it is. Okay. So, um, yeah, how, I don't know what, there's things out there, you know, we're seeing all these big deals going down and this and that. I don't know what to do. I was offered a couple of radio stations that, you know, I could put my stuff on and I thought, I don't know what I want to do with that. Then I was just offered, can you take your archives and just, you know, use those? But I didn't want to do that with just old stuff. I wanted to bring out, you know, new stuff, do, do new shows. So I have like 30 plus years of digitized archives that... um were done by the same guys that did Howard Stern's uh, yeah. Sternology, all of his yeah. digitation. And, and these the production guys, on the, 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 the archive show you ran the other week, the, the production yeah. on that, that big segment at the beginning that put it all together, the career and everything, so that's well guys, done. That, that's those so guys. Yeah. good. Yeah. yeah David Hyde, uh, Davmar, they call themselves. They, then they only did it for me and Howard. And uh, it's so good the way, because they, they go, you don't, have any idea how many things you have in here, do you? You have no idea what you've done. I said, not the slightest. 
<laughs> and we, when we do those shows, those instant request shows, we do a, rec- a show where the people will say, hey, I remember when you did this thing. You put that guy in a barrel and a bull pushed him around. Yeah, yeah. Then we go together and we go, I, we listen together and I go, what? Wait a minute. That's not how I remember it, you know? So it's that's kind of fun, Grab, to do that. But yeah, we have the archives. Uh, we have the live show. We have stuff that we're going to probably be start to, starting to do very soon on YouTube. Um, yeah, great. We're, more right. visual, more crazy stuff. So I think there's a, it's a great world we're living in. It really is. And if anything um, good could come out of it, I guess we were in the right place at the right time. And I just decided to build this studio because everybody kept telling me they're going to be either, the last guy told me we're building the studio for you. And then they never got back to me. One guy said, I'm leasing the studio to you that I could build my own studio in, but he never got back to me. So I just right. woke up one day and I go, this is ridiculous. I have to take control of this. I have to do this myself. And I didn't know anything about it. There was no pandemic in sight. Yeah. I just had it ready to go. And when it would hit and I couldn't get out and I couldn't get out, I go, we're, we're just doing it now. But there's no plan. You don't have a plan. There's no, we have to have a plan. I go, here's the plan. I'm going to tweet out one thing. Excuse me. I, we Facebook and our email database. We just went out and we just said, hey, we're live tomorrow. Yeah, Saturday, I got the Saturday. email. You're not, dreaming, we're sc- we're yeah. You're not dreaming, we're streaming. You're not dreaming, we're streaming. You also, I think in that email you sent me, a Johnny B, a wireless for the virus. <laughs> yeah. Wireless for the virus. Grab back. <laughs> yeah. You're one of the good guys, man. I really like you. I really enjoy you. I think you're talented as hell. And um, the London and the radio, whoever they have you, uh, whoever has you working with them, they should be happy to have you. I'm telling you, you're one of the good ones. Johnny, it's a, it's a pleasure to talk to you. You've been a major influence on my radio career. You are just a shining light in a, in a shit industry, really. <laughs> you are really just a beacon of hope for us all. Uh, the Jonathan Brian Mayer Showcast, it goes out live on Saturdays at 10 a.m. in Chicago, 4 p.m. in the U.K. It's also a podcast. Get everything you need to know at brandmeyershow.com. <laughs> Grand Mac, Grand Mac is back for an attack. Ooh.